Okay, so in the last video, we touched on the new product from Veeam called Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure, which is going to give us the ability to protect those workloads that are natively stored as Azure virtual machines. So what I wanted to show this time around was, well, how do we get some of our workloads that potentially live on premises, maybe in a vSphere environment or, or Hyper-V or any image based backup that we that we have. So first of all, I want to just show this is my virtual machines page within my um, Azure portal. So you can see I've got a couple of couple of things in here. I've got the Azure um, VBA or Veeam Backup for Azure appliance. I've got the worker. I've got a couple of test machines that I've already pushed up here using Direct Restore to Microsoft Azure, which is what we're going to go into in a bit more detail. I've also got um, a Veeam PN um, to connect back into the UK. So again, if we jump over into VBR and hopefully the screen resolution is a bit better than that one of, of yesterday as well. So as I mentioned, we can take any image level backup that we have on premises and we can convert that into a Microsoft Azure virtual machine. So how do we do that? And we've got the ability to either one, click that or find the machine under disk wherever that may be as well, whether it's a backup copy job, we can do it from there as well. And you've got the restore to Amazon, but also to Azure. We can do that also from our from our um, cloud tier, so the object storage op option. But then we've also got that, so the external repository is what ties into the cloud native backup with Veeam Backup for Azure and Veeam Backup for AWS and bring, allows us to bring those, those workloads back on premises. So let's just quickly run through what this wizard looks like. So this is one area. What we can also do, and I think this might actually be new in version 10, is the, the multiple selection and then still being able to right click and send all of those up to, up to Azure. So for the purpose of time because I actually want to do this completely live while we're recording is I want to run through what this wizard looks like so we've chosen our machine and it's a very small machine I'm not going to power it up at the other end but you'll just have to trust me that it's the process that that does work so first of all we have to choose our our subscription our location and a an Azure proxy and if we want to increase performance we could in fact choose an Azure proxy that is already deployed in Azure and that will improve the restore performance should we wish to. Um, a little bit on sovereignty. So this is basically us saying if you're taking data from one place to another, are you sure you want to do that? We can go to show details here and it says, right, we've got no location tag and we're going to East US. So we can say yes to that for demo purposes. Then we've got then we get into how do we want that Azure VM to look. So we can start to look at what size we want, what storage account we want that to live in, whether we want it to be managed or unmanaged. We can then um, talk about which disks. So in this instance, you can see that it's only a tiny, tiny VM, but it might be that you've got multiple disks and it might be a different use case that you're you're sending things up into, um, into Azure we'll get on to what some of those use cases are in a little while. Then what do we want it to be called? So there's obviously a naming, I think actually this breaks that naming convention. Um, but let's just give it a direct restore to Microsoft um, Azure, just as a so you can see that when it when it comes in, choose the resource group that we want wish that to actually fall into, you can also create a new one at this point. We can then choose what network we want that to live on. So I've got a couple set up so we can send it to specific subnets. We can choose here. So this is definitely new in, in version 10 is before we would assign a public IP address. Now, obviously, depending on what the configuration or the security configuration is within Azure, that could be quite, quite open. And um, so we've actually made it more secure in that you've got that option to to make that make that change. We can put it into a specific security group as well. Now, another option is if you're going to be taking workloads from 
one location and you're going to be sending them to another, it might be a good idea to actually scan them with your preferred antivirus software before getting them into that um, into that new environment. So making sure that they're there's no malicious files in there. So what this allows us to do is we're going to scan using antivirus that has command line support. So out of the box, we know that they work with Windows Defender, ESET and Symantec Protection Engine. And what we can do here is if, if some malware is detected, we can say, right, abort the VM recovery. We don't want to continue. Or we can say, actually, yes, continue. But I want you to put it into an isolated environment away from my production so that we don't infect anything and then we can go and actually remediate those those things later that adds a little bit of time as you'd expect because it's going to go and scan all of that that workload give it a reason again we'll go into the use cases around that and for this instance i don't want to power it on after i just want to get that data up there gives you a summary of what that's going to look like so kicking that off you'll see that it's going to start getting all of the the summary that we just went for now this takes about five minutes so why would you want to be moving well what would be the purpose of moving workloads from an on-premises or an image-based backup that you have on-premises or potentially from another cloud provider well it could be that you are absolutely looking to migrate and move those machines from a to b and that's obviously fine we can we can help you there with that from a, a scheduled point of view, but also getting those consistent backups into, into virtual machines within Azure, but also for, for AWS. It could also be for test and dev. A lot of people, especially customers that I've been speaking to recently, have actually moved away from purchasing their test and dev storage compute platforms for on-premises, and they're actually leveraging the public cloud more so to be able to perform some of those test and dev tasks in the public cloud at a, at a more subscription based license. So we could take all of those workloads from that backup from last night and we could schedule that to go up into, into AWS or into Azure. They could work on that and then we can pull that all down and we've written some automation scripts to, to enable us to do that as well. And so use case migration, use case, um, test and dev or some sort of development work against that could be security testing as well. And then finally is, well, actually recovery. So how could we recover workloads there? If we were to have a problem, a failure scenario within our production estate, and it might not be catastrophic, it might, it might not be a complete site outage. It might be that we've lost half of our ESXi hosts or we've lost half of our storage and we have no longer the resources on premises to be able to run all of our workloads but we have this infinite scalable public cloud that we can we can start to to look at and this gives us the ability to at least burst those workloads into microsoft azure or aws to then have things up and running up there and then once you've remediated what the failure scenario was on premises then we can at least bring everything back as well in the same fashion that I've, I've showed you in the previous video around leveraging either being back up for Azure or being back up for AWS and being able to bring those back in as a, as a virtual machine back into your environment. So obviously for us to do this, there is a level of, we have to do the conversion, we're leveraging the APIs from Azure and from AWS when we're doing it on that front. And you can see here that this is a really tiny virtual machine. So we've only had to send 2.6 gig of data up into Azure, and then we're going to run the, the conversion when it's up there. Um, obviously, we're we're tied by the the laws of physics here. We can't. It's not instant. But just to give you an idea, depending on what that link speed is to get up into into Azure. That's how long it's going to take. I mean, to put it into perspective, I've got uh, that the VBO servers that you saw, they are around 90 gigs worth of used data. They're leveraging the, um, the direct uh, object storage as a backup, but there's still 90 gigs worth of, of disk. 
So that takes about an hour to, to send that up. And the other use cases that I mentioned around like migration, the ability to do this from not only the disk, so the primary backup storage, we could do it from the secondary copy, so the backup copy storage if we if we so wish, but also from the object storage. So anything that's going into our cloud tier, whether that be via the move mode or copy mode, we've got the ability to do that direct restore there as well. Now, one of the experiments that I'm running at the moment is, well, how would it be quicker to run a direct restore to Azure if the data is already resided in um, Azure Blob Storage? So expect to see another another video come up around that and just to show. Because remember, as, as Veeam customers and even as Veeam users using the Community Edition, you can deploy as many Veeam community or Veeam backup and replication management services as you so wish. Um, you might use this one. This one's my main one, but I also have one running in Azure. I have one running in AWS. They're generally powered off, but that gives me the ability to hook into those object storage buckets or the, the blobs to be able to then do something with that data. And that gives me a lot of flexibility and portability of what, where and what I need to and how I need to recover that data. So this should be really just about finished. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to, I'm going to jump into, back into my Azure portal. And if we do a refresh, we should now see our, our new machine and, and what, it's, what it's looking like in, in terms of the recovery. So the other thing to add on to this, just to, to finalize the, uh, the process, is tags so we can come in here and we can define those tags so we could say bb for azure and then we can jump into here actually which is the veeam backup for microsoft azure we can add a new policy and if we just give this a name of test for now we want it to come from that same directory i want to add the uh, us east although you could ultimately add all of those in Is it East US? Definitely live, guys. Um, and then add, specify the resources. Now we want to do that via tags. So we can see that we've created the display name tag. But if I, because I didn't actually say anything else. So now I've added that. Now hopefully, I don't know how dynamic that is. See, you can see the virtual machine. So it sees the virtual machine. The tag is not there. what that one says there we go so then we've got the backup tag and that allows us to then in fact we could go in here and we could exclude that if it didn't have that tag on and there with the oh, with that policy created we could then start protecting that data as soon as it lands into into that into Azure. So this is taking a bit longer than it did before, maybe because something else is happening. But so if I just close this and I can go back in as well, um, just to quickly run through that setting again. So if we wanted to let's just choose those select a group. Oh, there was that that name.
if we look back at the jobs that I'd already run this morning, you can see that it took five minutes and 53 seconds total. So I think it varies very much on what, what is happening um, and where you're getting that this from and the connection speed <clears throat> into that into that account or into that region. So you see that 2.6 gig was restored at 19 meg and if we look at the successful one, it was at 18 meg, so something else has made that conversion take that little bit longer. And there we go, restore completed successfully. So <clears throat> everything we were, we were talking about within Azure gives us the ability to then start protecting that workload within there. And all of this can be done either via PowerShell or through the UI. It can even be done, as I said, through another VBR server that has access to the same backup repositories as, as we're talking about here. And with that, we're gonna talk about some more Azure stuff in the next video. Please subscribe, leave any comments in the, the uh, thing down below. Um, let me know if there's anything that you particularly want to see as well. I think that's important is whilst we're doing these these like interactive or live demos, then I want to be able to show something that's useful to you guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you.